welcome to All Things Property with Rach. Today we are going to be looking at um, chains, property chains, what they are, what they mean for you, um, and what does actually no one would chain or vacant possession that we see um, advertising in properties, what does it mean for you and how would it benefit yourself? So when you are buying and selling a property, you are guaranteed to be in a chain because you're gonna have someone below you and someone above you. A property chain when selling, is basically the links of the chain are each property within it. Um, obviously, the more properties you have in a chain, the more chances there are of things going wrong. Um, each property has to have survey, each property has to have searches, um, and it can also lengthen the time of the process. As ever within property selling, um, communication is key. So if you've got set dates that you're working towards, particularly when you're in a lengthy chain, you need to make sure that everybody knows them as quickly as possible. Now you're going to be limited slightly on who you can contact, especially in the long chain, estate agents down the chain and solicitors um, up and down the chain, but make sure your estate agent that you're buying through and selling through is aware of your deadlines and the same with your buyers and sellers. Um, it goes back to when people are viewing and when you are viewing properties, find out what sort of time scale that vendor or is looking for and the same with people buying your house before you accept an offer find out what time scale they're looking at does that match yours does it match the chain that you may already be in so that you can really try and line things up as much as possible as an estate agent um it's their job really to give you that information when you're um, accepting an offer they should be telling you how many people are in the chain they would have done a chain check to find out if there is a chain, what stage each person's up to, how many surveys have been done out of that chain, how many searches have been done, where are they up to, so that you know whether it's a relatively new chain, obviously there's more things that could come up that could go wrong, or and it can take a longer time, or if it's more established chain where surveys have already been done and paperwork's almost there, it could be that there's less things to go wrong and it could be much quicker. Ultimately, as ever, um, nothing is guaranteed until exchange. And this is where chains become a problem. Um, everybody's got to agree on the same dates and have all that paperwork back, ready to go for exchange of contracts. And again, going back to any specific dates, if you're moving areas, if you're looking for work or school, you need to have a certain date. Make sure your solicitor, your estate agent, your buyer and your seller are all aware of that from the beginning, um, whilst you can't start talking about completion dates right at the beginning, um, you can have that goal in mind. And if everybody's working to that goal, um, it's gonna be more achievable. You do need to be slightly flexible where you can and not make things personal. As you go up and down the chain, some people may need extra information. Um, solicitors may need to raise more inquiries if it's a particularly complicated property um, or purchase so you do need to be a little bit flexible and as i say try not to make it personal it, it put yourself in that person's position if something's come up if they're pregnant and they have a baby halfway through the move these are all things that could possibly add a little bit of time to it but as i say you need to put yourself in that person's position and think what would you do if you was them and and how it would be different and nine times out of ten you would do the same thing and, and it wouldn't be any different for you and you'd want people to to be that bit flexible with you too so obviously where you can, if you can break a chain, then that is um, the best position to put yourself in. Um, it could be that if you could move in with family or you're looking to move into rental, sell your property, break that chain. And then when you look, it also puts you in the best possible position for offering on a property. Um, it's not always possible due to mortgages and bits and pieces, but if you can, that's a great way to be able to maybe save yourself some money on your onward purchase because actually uh, a buyer coming to you with a no onward ch uh, with no chain behind them is much more favourable, as I said, because less things can go wrong and it can be quicker. Um, if the vendor is a motivated seller and wants to get things moving, you would be, even if you've offered less, you would be um, much higher and much like more likely to have your offer accepted than somebody that was, had a long chain behind them. 
When you're looking for properties, you quite often see uh, properties advertised with no onward chain or vacant possession. Obviously, again, this is great because that's going to be that chain break. Um, if, a, if a property is empty or then vendors are moving into rental accommodation or they don't have to have an onward purchase, that's going to be the end of your chain. Um, so obviously, you then can go back to your buyers and any chain below you and know that things can get moving. Um, Things, although chains can progress, as long as you've got a buyer and a seller, things can progress. Ultimately, they will come to a standstill until that whole chain is complete. You've got a start, properties in the middle, and then an end of a chain. So if you're buying a property, um, look at what where they're looking at and could that possibly be the end of a chain? Because you, it's good to know where it's going to start and where it's going to end. Um, so again, more so for time scales than anything else, it will give you a good idea of um, a, a good moving time scale if you've got that information. So having a chain doesn't always put you in a bad position. Obviously, um, if you are offering on a property and say a first time buyer or somebody in a non-dependent position there um, is also offering, but you're paying cash and they're paying with a mortgage, obviously they've got to have their mortgage agreed, they've got to have all their details in principle. So as long as you haven't got a very, very long chain, you could still be in as good a position as somebody um, that maybe doesn't have a chain but has more complicated finances that that they need to get put in place. So it doesn't always have to be a bad thing. All I would say is make sure you keep your communication open with your estate agent so that you are aware of everything every step of the way. That's all my information on chains for today. If you've got any questions, if you're involved in a chain yourself and you um, are unsure about anything or you're about to offer on a property and I've got a few questions about chains that you're not getting answers from anywhere else, do please get in touch. You're welcome to um, drop me a message or leave a comment below and um, yeah, we'll get back to you. And as ever, don't forget to like and subscribe.